after recording, so. Crane. Yes, sir. I'm gonna charge it back here. They don't want anybody to get hit. Okay. So uh, Chief Stallings is gonna hump you a little bit of hose. You come up, do whatever bend. I would go this way, right here, and then have whatever hose back here. All right, man. Cool. Sounds good. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yeah.
charge it like when the truck gets on scene. Okay. You're gonna get the air out of it. Make sure you're on a semi-fog pattern. Yeah, so they said don't, they said try not to destroy anything. Right, no straight streaming, so semi-fog. When you go in there, I know they've already talked to you about it, but hit the ceiling like you're steaming a fire. Quick burst. Okay. Be done, let it bank it down, then let it grow back up again. Yes, sir. And Are they going to tell us when they want it hit? When they want us to hit it so that we yeah, know? The, the senior guy over there will be telling you what he wants. All right. Okay. Good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. 
Can we get in there? On this next one, yeah. I really want you to fucking just like it. Oh, did I hold it for too long? A little bit. Okay. Because he was like, oh, off, and you spray for another 10 seconds. Sorry, sorry. It's like, like that, because they, they want, they really want, because like I said, they're showing them, they're not showing us. Yeah, yeah. So. It's so hard to like dial yeah. it back. So he said a quick, like quick, like shut it off. Don't. I guess I held it open too long. Yeah, just a quick pinch on the side, try to knock it up. Knock it down, but don't put it out. This is when they really want to not disturb anything. The layer of smoke that you see is important to us investigators because a lot of times it'll stain the walls. When the fire's out, you can actually see the line a few more pinches what they call it, where the soot stain was. It's just like, again, a level of, a, gives us a measure of movement for the fire. That put itself out. <laughs> when you look at some of your fire losses, you'll notice how that heat 
has gone up to the top of the ceiling, and then it starts to accumulate, and it starts to, we call it, bank down until it finds an opening. Once it finds an opening, it's going to a good coffee maker, too. At the same time, yeah. you've got cool air that's coming in the lower yeah, area. Yeah, the cabinets involved now. So you'll hear us talk about things like a thermal layer, where the cool air and the warm air are meeting, and really specific patterns that we like to find. And if you have a window in this cell uh, like you did the other, they can have a physical ventilation that comes in that you have to consider. I wouldn't open this one up all the way, just kind of gate it a little bit. Yes, sir. Not, nothing, no, no real pressure. To be honest, we don't need anything more than idle pressure, really. Oh, yeah. Right. So, there's actually spaces down here that could be quite comfortable for people. People can survive down here, even though all this mess is going on back here. So it's just amazing how these spaces look like. Yeah, we're done. Folks say that our fires are out, we're going to let them cool down. But what we're going to do is we're going to have them move this hand to the side because we want to give y'all an opportunity to come up closer for you to move it. And we're going to talk about what we're seeing inside of the So give us a few minutes to let them get them straight away, and I will invite you up. Thank you. 